Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Blaze Black 2. Last time, we explored quite a bit of Mimbasa City, but not quite all of it. And this time, we are going to be exploring Route 16 to see what we can see. So, let's get started. There are quite a few trainers here, so we're going to be doing quite a bit of fighting in this episode. This is called the Battle Train, all aboard. More like a subway, I think you would expect to encounter in this area. Ooh, Diglett. Interesting. I don't think we even know yet today what is under that little mound of dirt right there. Oh well, maybe we'll find out eventually. How on earth did it just punch me? I mean, look at that thing. I don't think that thing would be able to throw a punch if it tried. Oh well. Get our heal from the leftovers, very nice. And we got Doug Trio coming out, so let's deal with that. I love this thing's animation, it's just so weird but so funny. Uh, so last episode I should point out that I was searching for something in a couple of houses in Nimbaza City but never actually found it. I was looking for HMO4 Strength because I was under the impression that we didn't have it yet. And that was where you got HMO4 Strength in the original Black and White. But it turns out in Black and, White, Black and White 2, we already have it from the sewers, so yeah, a little bit of a derp on my part. So apologies for that, but yes, we do already have the item that I was looking for. A little bit awkward, but ah well. Anyway, first trainer down. Now this area introduces a bit of an amusing mechanic. If I hold down the B button, these characters bike faster. If I don't, they go slower. Pretty interesting, isn't it? I think they do that just to increase your chances of getting caught by them, so that's pretty amusing. Alrighty, so we have a cyclist, and he has four Pokemon. Wow, that's a lot! And the first one up is an Apom. Apom is an interesting Pokemon that they were way too fascinated with right around 2006, 2007 in the Pokemon anime. I have no idea why they decided to put so much focus on Apom of all things, but oh well, I don't claim to know why the anime producers do what they do. I'm noticing that some of our Pokemon are a little bit lower level than I would like, which is a little unfortunate. I'm thinking we might swap out Fluffy for something that can use ground-type moves in one of the next week's episodes. I'm still not quite decided on that front. Alright, get our Quick Claw boost, which is pretty awesome, and lay on the Thundershock. Almost brings it down. Actually pretty good. So let's try and bring this thing down real quick here. And then we should be able to move on with our adventure. Down goes Dope Duo. Is that going to get us level 22? Yes it does! Very nice. Awesome. Honestly, Fluffy will not be very useful to us in the upcoming gym fight, so I'm kind of hesitant to try and train it up too much because I'm honestly not sure how useful it will be. But Fluffy would definitely be useful, I want to say, two gym fights from now. It would be pretty useful, but in the intervening time, it really won't be. Which is a little unfortunate. It puts me in an awkward position in regards to Fluffy. Anyway, bring down Ambipom, who has like the best cry ever. Lucario gets level 33 and wants to learn Quick Guard, although I find that it's not very useful in many situations. It's basically Protect, but it only protects against priority moves. So, I don't find that it's too terribly useful. We have a Trico coming out, which is definitely interesting. So let's send out Victini for the first time in a little bit. Love Victini's cry, it's really funny. And out comes Trico. I don't think we have a Trico, although I believe we did have the opportunity to get one. I believe the season just wasn't right. And I believe we actually have one more of those Harlequins to find that will give us a starter Pokemon, although I don't think he's in Nimbasa City. I believe he's somewhere else. Anyway, down goes the Cyclist. 
Very cool. I believe there is one more on this round. Am I correct about that? Oh, we have a double battle here. Interesting. Alrighty. I haven't had a double battle in a little while, I don't think, so this is pretty interesting. They call them backers, but it's pretty obvious that they're just sports fans. I don't know. I've never heard anyone call them backers. Maybe it's just a another country thing? I've never heard it, that's for sure. Alright, take a quick attack. Definitely not going to do too terribly much damage. And how well is Return going to do? Wow, it actually survived with a critical. That's impressive. Wow, they both survived. What does Flatter do again? Oh right, this is the special version of um, Swagger. I forgot about that. We encountered this before. Yeah. Also, the camera has to pan a lot. Wow. Alright, do we have Razor Leaf yet? No, we do not. That's unfortunate. So we're going to have to bank on Lucario not hurting itself in confusion, which is really not a very wise bank, especially in the fifth generation. I feel like you hurt yourself in confusion a lot more in this game. Bulbi gets level 30, which is very nice. I wonder when it evolves. I actually don't remember. And wow, we actually hit through the confusion, which is super awesome. Win in fights and taking names. Very good. Servine gets level 30 as well. Very good. Alrighty. Yep, here's the other biker. I knew there was one around somewhere. Ting-a-ling-ling. -ling. Full speed attack coming your way. Only if I hold the B button, ma'am. And she's got three Pokemon. We're seeing quite a few Pokemon in this episode, which is nice. We haven't caught too terribly many this week. Well, really, we haven't caught any this week so far, which is a little unfortunate. I think what we're going to do is sometime in between badges 4 and 5, we're going to make a big trip around catching a lot of Pokemon just to boost our numbers a bit. I think it would be wise to do so just so we aren't really back heavy on the project in terms of catching Pokemon. We have a Ducklet coming out. I'm going to send out Fluffy just because Ducklet is a quad weakness to electric type attacks. Should serve us pretty well. Alrighty. A lot of people hate Ducklet just because of its name. I really don't find Ducklet too terribly offensive of a Pokemon. I think it's fine. Plus that one episode of the anime where that Ducklet trio was in it was pretty funny. I really wanted them to make that a sort of running gag, but like a lot of other things in the Best Wishes series, I was left to be disappointed. Ah well. Anyway, down goes Ducklet, and now we have a Farfetch'd coming in. Which is probably the original useless Pokémon. Ay hey, uh, Just watch, now that I say that, it's probably gonna manage to take out my Floppy. I suppose that's a decently likely eventuality since Floppy's five levels underneath this thing. Yeah. Okay, guys, you can't judge me too much for that. I mean, I was at a level disadvantage of about five. Anyway, let's send in Victini here and see what we can do. Let's do Flame Charge. I remember Flame Charge was, I believe, one of the first moves they actually advertised for this game. I'm not sure why they picked Flame Charge of all things. I suppose it's because it's a relatively early game move that you're going to run into some way or another. Anyway, I think that's the last trainer on this route, on this outer part. Anyway, right here we have Marvelous Bridge, two truly marvelous, and also a bridge. Interesting thing about this bridge. You can't go in it. What? Oh no, is the elevator broken? Yeah, this is a post-game area, so we're not going to be getting onto this bridge anytime soon. Oh, awesome, that just made my day. This vending machine gave me an extra drink. For free. I'll share my spoils with you. Otherwise, I'll burst with joy. And we get free fresh water. Definitely appreciated. 
If I keep getting extra drinks, I'll be rich. By just giving them away to random passerby? Okay. No matter what time or place, I have my umbrella at the ready. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I could get behind that. Definitely get behind that. I'm sure there's also a political statement that can be made about that, which I won't make. Anyway, there's a couple of ways we can go here. First off is this boulder right here. If we go into our bag, we should have HM04 strength from earlier. I'm going to sort this out. There it is. Alright, let's see who on our team can use strength. Strength is actually pretty powerful a move. So I think we're gonna get rid of it. Get rid of um return on Fluffy. If I change my mind, I can just switch it back. But strength is just a flat 80, which is nice. So it's really not that much of a downgrade, especially since I don't think Fluffy likes me that much due to the fact that it faints relatively often. Anyway, let's get that dowsing machine back out. And I feel like this generation has the best iteration of strength boulders, because you push the boulder, it falls in the hole, and it will never, ever, ever, ever move from that spot. Very, very nice. In Generation 6, it also operated on this system, but unfortunately, um, some boulders couldn't be pushed into pits. In this game, every single one can be pushed into a pit, which means eventually strength will not be needed to navigate the world anymore. Which I really, really, really prefer. I also like how they experimented with flying without an HM in um, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I'm really hoping that's them sort of experimenting with getting rid or at least heavily modifying the HM system. Because I feel like the HM system really limits team building in this game. Because you either pick a team that you really want to go with and then you have to carry around an HM slave, or you build the HMs into your team, which sort of nerfs it a little bit, because the HM moves tend to not be too terribly good. So I'm really, really hoping that's something they change in the future, and I think pretty much everyone else in the fandom will agree with me on that point. I think there's an item over here we can get. Yes, there is. TM66 Payback. I believe that is a Dark-type move, so I'm gonna want to keep that in mind. And it looks like there is a hidden item right here. Yes, Tiny Mushroom. We're going to have to keep an eye out for the item expert as before. Just to see if we can pawn that off on him for some free cash. Let's navigate back through the grass here. And now there's this one other section of the route which we can navigate. And it looks like it also has a cuttable tree right here. And I think I actually got rid of my Pokemon that I had taught Cut to. So it looks like I have to teach Cut to someone, it looks like it's going to be Volibi. Like, see, this is what I'm talking about. We have to sort of waste a slot on Cut, which is really, really disappointing because Cut is just a really poor move. Um... Hmm... I'm going to get rid of Nasty Plot just because since it raises special attack, but all of my attacks are physical, it's really not worth it at the moment at least. But as I said, we can always change our team around later on if we so desire. Alright, Dowsing Machine back up. And let's heck and slash right on through here. Honestly, if they do what they did in Generation 6 going forward, and they have the menu as icons across the bottom of the bottom screen, and so they let you access the menu and have your dowsing machine out at the same time, and they do a dowsing machine like this one, it'll pretty much be the best lower screen setup ever, because I stand by my assertion that this is pretty much the best dowsing machine out there. So I really hope they try and adapt it when Generation 7 rolls around. I don't know why, but I'm really excited for Generation 7 already, just because it's probably going to wind up on Nintendo's next handheld. And since it feels like X and Y really tried to sort of future-proof the back end of the games, I feel like they could definitely focus a lot more on the mechanics of the game and the extra stuff you can do. I know that's like really far in the future, probably. 
but I'm still pretty excited for it. It's also kind of scary, because at that point, this generation that I'm playing here right now, Generation 5, will be two generations old. Which is quite the frightening prospect, to, to be honest, because I remember when Black and White first came out, the whole hype cycle was so real, and it's just going to be weird it being so old. Realizing that Diamond and Pearl are nine years old is kind of disturbing to me. Uh, in fact, I believe if I'm keeping my scheduling straight, last episode was the first episode to go live when I am 20 years old, because I'm turning 20 on the Tuesday of this week, so next time I record, I'll be 20, which is legitimately terrifying. I don't know where that came from. Jeez, 20, that's just, that's not right, man. Alrighty, I believe that was the last trainer on this route, which means we are free to enter this area right here. I love this music. Alright, now over here, we have another Pokemon Breeder. So keep in mind that if you come back into this area, this guy's going to want to fight you because the breeders do that weird rematching thing in this game. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Looks like he's got a Bonsai here, which is pretty interesting. It's the baby form of pseudo Widow, and say goodbye because it's gone. Or it could have Sturdy because everything and its mother has Sturdy in this generation, it feels like. They buffed Sturdy in this game, and then I think they wanted to sort of flaunt the fact that they did it by giving pretty much everything under the sun Sturdy so they could show it off. Super frustrating, because honestly, having to two-hit KO when you're running into a Geodude or something like that in a cave, oh, it's so annoying. So, so annoying. Alright, we have a Mudkip coming in here, which is pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure I've already made this joke before, but I heard you like them. <laughs> I feel like I'm throwing too many of these jokes in here. Oh well, down goes Mudkip. And it looks like Lucario has hit 100 HP. Definitely very, very awesome. When you get into the three digits on your HP, it really drives home the fact that we've really come a long way, and we've got a long way to go yet. It's kind of crazy. I think by this point in my Liquid Crystal LP, I believe in episode 33 of Liquid Crystal, we were earning badge number 7. It really doesn't feel like that that LP went that quickly, but I guess it really did. I'm not entirely sure if this LP is going to be longer than that one, but it darn well might be. Which is terrifying, because that one was incredibly long, and I can't imagine doing anything longer. But we just might. It's kind of crazy I've been doing this for like a year and a half, I think? Something like that? It really doesn't feel like it's been that long. And then of course there's the fact that I made non-LP videos even before that. It's crazy. When I think about how much work I've put into this. Anyway, Flame Charge on Togetic does not a whole lot, actually. Oh no, we're gonna take a yawn. Sheesh. Um, let's try Confusion. How well could, will uh, Confusion do? We get Stab on it. And it actually does worse, and now we're asleep, which is great. Jeez, I hate being asleep in this game. Whenever you fall asleep in Pokémon, it really just feels like... Just an inconvenience, mostly. A really frustrating... Oh, right, we got locked into confusion. That seems really odd to me. In older games, when you got stuck with Encore, the instant you hit fight, it would just auto-select the move. But in this one, you have to manually select the move you're locked into, which seems really bizarre to me. I don't know why they did that. Oh well. Anyway, down goes Togetic, and we defeated yet another breeder. 
We're going to have to keep these guys in mind if we ever need to train in the future, because that's an eventuality that we're really going to have to embrace. A woodland ore. I'm pretty sure that's similar to the item we got last episode, except it evolves Eevee into Leafeon, so we're going to have to keep that in mind. Alright, what are we going to encounter? It's an Execute. Interesting. Well, it's something we don't have, and we haven't caught any Pokemon this week thus far, so let's see if we can catch this one. Really don't want to knock it out. Hopefully we won't knock it out, because that would be kind of bad. Also, I'm realizing, how did my Lucario get so much HP back? I guess it just got healed a lot from, um, from the leftovers, and just never got attacked back, and I wasn't paying attention. Alright, I'm pretty sure one more quick attack would either come incredibly close to knocking it out, or would just flat out knock it out, period. Which I really don't want to have happen, so I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna chuck a Pokeball at it. How many do I have? Oh, we got 21. That's not too bad. Wow. Seriously? Oh well. I find that catching Pokémon is an exercise in frustration at times. I'm sure many people can agree with me at that. I can't believe we only have one Legendary in this game so far. Going after all the other Legendaries is going to be an absolutely insane undertaking. It's going to be so expensive trying to pay off all of the Pokéballs to try and catch them because I believe that there's like 35 to 40 legendaries available to us in this game. Every single one is available, I just don't remember exactly how many there are. But there's a lot, so that's going to be interesting. Anyway, it looks like we caught Execute, which is very nice, took a little bit longer than I would have liked. But it's nice to get some more Pokedex data under our belt for this week. Its six eggs converse using telepathy. They can quickly gather if they become separated. Very interesting, although I don't know what's up with that one in the back. It looks like it's got its head smashed open. Gruesome. Now I'm pretty sure under these... Yes. We are totally in sync. Using our amazing connection, I will teach you all about rangers. Pokemon Rangers tend to do that. They tend to hide out in areas where they will look suspicious, but you can't really tell that it's a trainer under it. Pretty interesting. And once it rolls over into fall in our game, um, perhaps next episode actually, we might want to actually backtrack to earlier areas in the game because there is one area in particular that alters itself specifically in the fall that I'd like to go and check out at some point real soon. In fact, I believe this will be the first time it will have been autumn in the game. Yes. Yeah, it'll be the first time that we've experienced autumn because I started the LP in August and at that point it was winter. So that's pretty interesting. We're gonna have a a full year of episodes worth, I guess, and I have a feeling we're going to see the uh, season cycle at least twice more throughout the duration of the LP. Unfortunately, there are quite a few endgame stuff things that are season-specific, so hopefully we'll be able to cover all that, because it would be quite frustrating to wind up right at the end of the game with nothing else to do except something that is season-specific and have to wait. But I suppose if that does happen, I can just upload the episodes during whatever the next project winds up being. Definitely undecided on that at the moment. I usually choose my projects depending on how much work I have to do outside of YouTube and sort of gauge what I'll be able to put together in the time I have, which is why I chose to do another Pokemon LP as they're pretty laid back, so just gonna have to see what's going on when this LP eventually comes to an end. Do you know this berry? The Pecha Berry, or the Pekka Berry, or however you pronounce it. Listen carefully, you may hear the sound of breathing Pokemon and plants. Now is that item right here? Where is it? Oh no, it's up there. 
Unfortunately, we cannot get up there at the moment because we need waterfall. Fortunately, it looks like there is yet another hidden item right here, Leafstone. Getting a lot of evolutionary items, I definitely appreciate that. Unfortunately, we're going to have to ignore that item for now. Is there another trainer up here? There is. Going to want to challenge him. And we get TM86 Grass Knot. This move is interesting because literally everything and its mother can learn it. But it's really not a traditional grass type move because it actually has effects based on weight. The heavier your opponent is, the more damage it does. It's basically like a tripping move. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, pretty much, is the philosophy behind that move. Anyway, we have one more trainer here, I believe, so let's try and take him out pretty quickly here. I'm trying to get my Lucario pretty high up in level, because Lucario can learn ground-type moves that I can teach it via TM. And we're definitely going to want those on our Lucario, and since it's Steel-type, it does resist quite a lot. So I want to try and build up our Lucario, because it really can take quite a few types of hits, which we're going to want to have it do in the upcoming gym. Not sure when we're going to be doing the next gym, it might be next week, but honestly there are quite a few things that you can do in the Nimbaza City area before you take on the gym. And I'd like to do as much of it as possible, because... As we experienced in Castelia City, the gyms in this game are no joke, and I definitely like to train myself up for them as much as I can. Or, rather, if you'd like to think of it, I'd like to put it off as long as possible because I don't want to get absolutely slaughtered. Whatever way you'd like to think of it. Anyway, let's bring out Houndoom here and finish this Heracross with a well-placed Fire Fang. Odd thing about Fire Fang, in um, Generation 4, I believe, there was a glitch where Fire Fang could hit through Wonder Guard regardless of what Pokémon had it. So even though Shedinja is actually weak to fire so you wouldn't experience it during normal gameplay, I'm pretty sure if you hacked Wonder Guard onto another Pokémon, it would still take damage from Fire Fang, which is really, really weird. Anyway, we got a Cherry Berry. The forest and the Pokémon that live inside are alive. Something changes every day, so it's fun to patrol. Yes, indeed. Now, over here, we have this backpacker. Hi, trainer. You have a Pokédex, I see. I'm a traveler. I enjoy trekking around the world and talking with various people. By the way, do you know a Pokémon called Zoroark? Yes, it was mentioned to us in the gate to Route 16. Great. Are you armed with knowledge so that it won't trick you? It's your choice to trust it and be tricked, or to live in doubt. I enjoyed talking with you. This is a small present. And here we have TM95 Snarl. Because it is legitimately obtainable in this game, it was not obtainable in black and white for reasons that I believe I explained back in an episode in Castelia City. They say Zoroark settled in around here about two years ago. It changed the appearance of this grassland with its illusion ability, and tricked people and Pokémon. It's an outrageous rumor, but a rumor has some truth in it. Every rumor has a kernel of truth to it. Indeed. Every rumor has a kernel of truth. And in this case... There it was, right there. <laughs> Pretty crazy stuff, that was actually Zoroark. Unfortunately, we are not able to catch one directly, but it does evolve from a Pokémon called Sorua, which we can obtain decently soon in our adventure, so we're definitely going to have to keep an eye out for that, because it's a pretty interesting Pokémon. Probably not going to wind up using it, because I already have two Dark-types on the team, so... Yeah, that's basically our plan going forward in regards to Zoroark. We're gonna get one, definitely, but I'm probably not gonna wind up using it. Anyway, let's take this shortcut, as we always do, and head out of the Lost Lorn Forest, and back into Route 16. So, I think that's probably gonna end off our episode here.
Oh, is this one of those special spots? I guess it is. Hi, is this David? Wow, so you're a boy, David? Uh, yes? It's a little annoying that we can't see each other, right? Just so you know, I'm a girl. Uh, okay. Teehee. Oops, my colleague is calling me. I have to get back to work. Talk to you again. Goodbye. As you can see, the cross transceiver rang only on this very specific spot. There are many spots around the Unova region like this, as I mentioned before. I believe you have to get Yancey or Curtis to call you, I want to say, ten or so times before the side quest will actually get anywhere, so we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on that. It's a very strange side quest, and it's going to be going throughout our whole adventure. Wow, there's an item around here? I guess there is! Free Thunderstone. Definitely appreciate it. Awesome. Anyway, let's head into the Pokemon Center here. Are there any medals that we can grab? Looks like no, unfortunately. So let's heal up, and I think we're going to end off this week's set of three episodes. So, this past episode on Pokemon Blaze Black 2, we explored Route 16, and we discovered the secret of the Lost Lorn Forest. And next time, we are going to be exploring around Nimbaza City a little bit more. We might be going to the sports courts, or we might be trying to see if we can head out to the west a little bit. Either way, without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.